Today's video is all about Dollar Tree wood items that I turned into some really super cute DIYs. It is called the Dollar Tree Wood Challenge and I'm joining three other creators. I'm joining DIY from House to Home, Krista's Crafty Life, and Happiness Created. And we're all doing a little playlist and sharing just DIYs that were created out of Dollar Tree wood. There's not much more to say, so let's just get into the crafts. On my channel, I love to share easy DIYs and budget home decor. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. Here we are at Dollar Tree and that is where the magic will start for this Dollar Tree Wood DIYs video. If you haven't been to Dollar Tree in a while, you might be surprised at the selection of wood pieces that they now carry. They have wood slices, raw wood signs, wood shapes, wood cutouts, and a whole lot more. Now, of course, the selection will vary from store to store and season to season, but it's worth checking out if you're doing a small project. They have wood crates, although those have gotten smaller over time, and great wood blanks, and wood pieces so that you can create your own custom wood DIYs. You could use this to make a personalized little jewelry box. Now that you've gotten a glimpse of what they have, let's get to crafting. I saw these cute tag pieces that already had beads attached and thought it would make a great tear tray piece. They had three different colors, but for this one, I'm actually going to stain the back using Waverly Wax in the color Antique. It's really very easy to apply. I just paint it on and then I use a damp scrap piece of cloth to wipe off the excess. It dries really quick and I love the finish that it gets. I then added a simple vinyl decal that I made using my Cricut that says, I love you most. I actually meant it to say, I love you more but I forgot to, so, oh well. Anyways, I used Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape to transfer the decal onto the tag, and it turned out really cute. It was very easy to make and took no time at all, and it'll look great on my tiered tray. One of the things that I wanted to do more of in 2023 was connect with other crafters and creators. And so I'm on a playlist today, so I'm checking that little bar. I'm connecting with some DIY YouTubers, but I also want to connect with you if you're a crafty creator. So I have a group on Facebook called Crafty DIYs on a Budget, and I'd love it if you join. I run it with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY. The link is going to be in the description box below, and I hope you join us. You'll need several things for this next DIY if you don't already have them on hand in your stash. You're gonna need some wood dowels, a couple of wood planks, some craft sticks, although in my project I used the jumbo size, and one of these wood crates, and I chose the one with no handle cutouts. I start off by staining everything with Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And then to put it all together, I start by gluing the two planks together in a V. And I'll spoil the surprise and tell y'all that this is going to be a kissing booth and this is the roof. I glue a square dowel on the long side of one plank and then I glue the other plank to it. I put hot glue in the corners and place the round dowels in each corner. This is what's going to support the roof. And like I said, I used the jumbo craft sticks and I cut off both ends of each stick. And I was going to try and make a shingle type look for the kissing booth. So I saved the middle piece as I'm adding that to the roof as well. For whatever reason, I didn't film part of this next part. But on the first side, the part that I did film, I glued the craft stick ends on top of the roof and then I was going to lay the remaining craft stick on top of it, kind of layering it to look like shingles. I didn't like how that looked. So on the other side, I glued the craft stick ends underneath the edge of the roof and then just glued the center pieces of the craft stick flat on the roof. And to attach the roof to the booth, Marvin told me to kind of sand the dowels down at an angle so it would have more surface to attach to, but I didn't listen. So if this falls apart next week, then it's totally my fault. But I did add a ton of hot glue just so hopefully it stays. And I don't know if you watch TikTok much, but my handle's Our Gray House over there, and there's a song on there that goes, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Well, that's how I felt when I saw my hand lettering. So to fix that, I painted over it, and I actually haven't made a new sign or figured out what I want to do for the top part, but this is how it turned out, and it's still pretty cute. Don't forget, 
There's a playlist link in the description box below and I hope you'll check it out because the gals that I'm joining today are really awesome. If you have a kissing booth, you need tickets. So that is what I'm making for this next DIY. I'm taking a tray and you'll notice it has acorns on the end of it. So this is a tray from fall, but it's okay. You won't see the ends. I give it a quick coat of Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And to cover up those acorns, I glue a heart on each side that I painted with Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint in the color Milk Jug. And using the Dollar Tree sign and some other images as inspo, I created a decal that I'm applying with my favorite Expressions Vinyl Paper Transfer Tape. And y'all, yes, still using those markers that are kind of dried out because they still have some life in them and I'm not trying to waste supplies. And I'm just adding some details to make it look more like a ticket. This one turned out super cute as well and I can always turn it around and use the inside of the tray for another sign. You can grab four of these wood sticks from Dollar Tree or do like I did and use the scrap wood I had at home. Okay, this is how one of my projects comes Go to boom! Comes together. Yes, it's December 31st, Michigan plays today at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. And um, we are Michigan fans. Even though Cut. They're, even though they're playing TCU, which is the Texas team that it is. Okay, so I'm making the Love You More sign and it's going to be on these little blocks. So what I have to do, honey, is um, I got these at Dollar Tree, by the way. Um, and I got the dowels from the local hardware store, Elliot's. And the reason I have Marvin helping me is because he's much better at um, measuring than I am. So I am not really good at measuring. I mean, I'm good at it, but like, he's more precise, he's more detailed, he's more patient with the measuring. I, like I said before, I measure with my heart. I'm like, it's close enough, you know, and that works. This is just us trying to figure out where to put the holes, how far apart they need to be, just all kinds of blah, 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 mad stuff, and trying not to argue. But also, speaking of arguing, did we ever collectively decide and agree on like how many planets there are? Oh, anyway, I was just thinking about that. But anyway, back to the crafts. One thing that I've learned that you do have to keep in mind is the fact that the width of the blade, because if you're, especially if your me measurements have to be like exactly precise, you want to make sure that you're accounting for the width of the blade because... For instance, if this is supposed to be 10 inch, you want to, your saw blade will come in on the outside of that line. So you're basically cutting right at the line, but to this side of it. But then if you didn't take that into consideration, when you make the next cut... That's why I marked from both ends mm -hmm. because if you marked 10 and 20, you're going to be short because of the width of the saw blade, which is usually about an eight, eighth of an inch or so. But here's a fun fact. Marvin's using an end of the board that has glue residue on it. Look on the other side. Hmm. Well, that's what a scraper's for. Okay. I, I couldn't get it off. I had made a cat scratching thing, try to, anyway. Oh, this is um. your work. <laughs> okay. I'm a DIYer. <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna we're gonna cut the wood and um, how long do we have to make, oh, did you say 11 inches on these? Um, yes. And a golden rule of carpenters everywhere is measure twice, cut once. I've never heard it. Yes. I'm not a carpenter, so bad. You've never heard that measure twice, cut once? Yes. Oh. <laughs> oh, you know what else, though? Um, speaking of, this has nothing to do with this, but um, on New Year's Day, do y'all eat anything special? I mean, you're going to see this after New Year's Day happened, but tell me in the comments below. On New Year's Day, do you eat anything for good luck for the new year? So, um... We <laughs> eat like ham and black eyed peas and cabbage. And some people eat greens instead of cabbage. We eat cabbage. Um, what was the other thing? I didn't know we ate cabbage. Yeah. Black eyed peas. And oh, cornbread. and cornbread, cornbread. And the, um, the peas are for pennies and the um, green, the, the leaves, uh, the, the greens or the cabbage is for um, 
like money, dollars or whatever, and then the cornbread is for gold. Now, um, now I just read that part yesterday, but I've always, I mean, always heard about the black eyed pea thing, right? And so um, I was telling my daughter, she lives in the Pacific Northwest, the PNW, and um, she had not heard of it really. I guess they don't do it up there. And so when I was reading, it's kind of like, maybe it's a Southern thing, I don't know. Also, um, that's the wreath from fall. That didn't change it out for Christmas, and so I need to change it out. So I'm actually doing <laughs> some, I'm, I'm doing some, a decor piece for that in an, in an upcoming video. But, um, anyways, okay, so let's go out and cut some wood. So Marvin put center markings um, where he needs to drill the hole. He's drilling a pilot hole right now, and then we'll get a different drill bit thing to go all the way through. So after all of that, I painted each cube white, but here's something to remember. If you're gonna stencil on the layer like I am, you really, really, really need to sand it good so there are no bumps or ridges or anything like that, and it's super smooth. I did not, I regretted it, but it is what it is. I originally had a longer dowel from the local hardware store, but that didn't work out, so I went and got these wooden dowels from Dollar Tree. I stained them and this wood that will be the frame with Waverly Wax in the color antique. And I cut out the letters to spell love you more and I used removable vinyl to create the stencils. And that all worked fine and dandy and would have been great, but the cubes were not smooth and so when I removed the vinyl it was not a crisp clean stencil. So I was like, ugh, womp womp. And I went back with my crusty paint pen. Y'all, I probably shouldn't give my paint pen such a hard time because at least they work, right? And they worked well enough for me to clean up the stencil lines. Now to put it all together. And so that turned out, I love it. I need to go back and make sure each cube is stabilized, but I think it turned out so cute. The final DIY for today uses this wood circle and I'm going to be making a sign for my door or <laughs> maybe for over my fireplace and I finally change it from fall y'all to, you know, who knows. Anyway, we'll see. The front and back of the circle got a coat of folk art paint in the color linen. And I used some Dollar Tree vinyl to make this cheetah print stencil, or maybe it's leopard print, I don't know. But what I do know is that this circle is larger than my Cricut mat, so I had to cut and splice and dice to make it work. Socks was even there trying to help me, but it was a little tricky to match up everything, but in the end, I got it done. And the next step that I like to do is to paint a light coat of the base coat on before I put on the stencil paint color. I think this helps to keep the stencil lines crisp. I got this smaller circle from Michaels and I'm painting it with Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And now I'm applying folk art matte paint in the color mushroom. And I didn't want to leave the peeling back of the stencil out of this video because it's kind of satisfying. The trick to paint beads is to put a piece of masking tape down, sticky side up, and then put a piece of masking tape on each end to hold it down and then set the beads on top of that. It'll help hold them all in place and, you know, for you while you paint, you're welcome. And I told y'all I measure with my heart, but sometimes I should try to measure with a ruler because this didn't exactly come out center, but, you know, it's close enough. Hot glue the little circle onto the bigger circle. And y'all, <laughs> I'm going to spare y'all the 25 minutes of me trying to make a cute bow and trying to add greenery. Y'all, it, it was brutal. And I'm serious. And then at the end, I mean, I dare y'all to tell me that the bows that I made don't look like Nellie Olson's bow, Olson's bow on Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> I just can't with it, y'all. But I tried, but I'm not quite there yet with my bow making skills. It, at least not yet. But all in all, it turns out pretty cute and I'm getting better each day at my crafting skills and this is just part of it. So please, please y'all check out the playlist. These gals that I'm partnering with today and collaborating with are just so amazing and awesome and I just love connecting with them and I would love it if you would give them a follow and check out their channels as well.
Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate the company as I craft and create, and I hope you enjoyed the projects that I shared today. Don't forget, it is part of a playlist. The link is gonna be in the description box below. The other gals are amazing, and I'm sure you'll enjoy their videos as well. And let me know which one was your favorite of the ones that I created today. And I think that's it. I think that's all I was gonna say. So um, if you wanna follow me on social media, such as like here on YouTube, over on TikTok, Instagram, something like that. My handle is Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.